In this video, I'm going to talk about pediatric communicable diseases. Remember that many of these infectious diseases have become way less common because of immunizations, but in some instances, they still do occur. It is important to recognize both the disease and the supportive and preventive measures that we as nurses can utilize. So let's first start to talk about varicella. Varicella, otherwise known as chickenpox, has an incubation period of two to three weeks. The incubation period is the period from exposure to when the person starts to show symptoms. So what are the symptoms of varicella? We know, of course, many individuals who have chicken pox have fever, malaise, they start to itch, or they'll have pruritic macules that then turn into pacules, papules, sorry, and then eventually into vesicles. Chicken pox or varicella generally begins on the trunk or upper body and spreads to the face and extremities. The macules are flattened uh, little areas, then turn into papules, and then they'll turn into vesicles, which have fluid in them, vesicles, and then they dry after about one week. So how is varicella transmitted? Varicella is transmitted via respiratory and direct contact and so we use airborne precautions for varicella. Treatment for varicella includes diphenhydramine, you know, otherwise known as Benadryl. We can use calamine lotion to the skin. We could do colloidal oatmeal baths. We have to teach the children to avoid scratching. We have to keep the nails low. For very young children, we may have to put the little mittens on. And then of course, we have to teach them to keep their hands clean. Remember, for the fever, we cannot give children aspirin because it has an association with Ray's syndrome. So what are complications of varicella? Some of the complications include, because of the pruritic nature of the problem and the fact that they're itching and scratching all the time, they can develop secondary bacterial infections, especially within those lesions that you know are open areas in the skin. And long-term complications could include encephalitis or pneumonia. So that's varicella, AKA chicken pox. Another common communicable disease, disease in pediatrics is rubeola, measles. So we're gonna learn two different types of measles. The first one is rubeola. And you will learn rubeola because it transmits differently and we see a little bit of different symptoms. So rubeola measles has a an incubation period of 10 to 20 days or so. It transmits via airborne uh, transmission and it has different stages. These symptoms start with a fever, a generalized malaise, a cough. Some children have even conjunctivitis. But what is uh, particular to rubeola is that children develop coplic spots. Now, as they move out of the catarrhal stage, they start to develop uh, red macules and papules or an erythematous maculopapular rash. But that's just a long way of saying uh, red bumps over the skin. They'll start in the face and they'll spread downward in about three to four days after the catarrhal stage. So how do we treat rubeola measles? For one, the child will need bed rest. Because of the fever, they'll benefit from antipyretics. They also know that if we minimize the environment, so for example, dim the lights, uh, reduce to move that stimulation in the environment. And then of course, uh, for any crusting and the conjunctivitis, we can clean the eyelids with saline. Complications of rubeola include otitis media, or another way of saying an ear infection, also includes pneumonia, and some children can even develop bronchiolitis or inflammation of the bronchioles. Another common pediatric communicable disease is parotitis or mumps. Mumps is inflammation of the salivary glands and mumps transmits via droplet transmission. So as far as our, our transmission-based precautions, there are droplet precautions for mumps. Mumps has an incubation period of 14 to 21 days. And again, it's spread from the uh, saliva from when they cough or if you come within uh, direct contact. Symptoms of mumps include fever, headache. Many children will have pain along the cheeks or 
uh, uh, playing along with parotid glands, especially by the third day. Male children can develop orchitis from having mumps. Uh, mumps is treated with analgesics for the pain. They also have a fever, so they'll get antipyretics. Bed rest helps. A lot of fluids because you want to prevent dehydration from the fever. And then scrotal support if there's any orchitis. Complications of mumps include deafness, encephalitis, myocarditis, and even epididymitis or orchitis as said before. So very, very intense complications can even cause problems with the heart. Another common pediatric communicable disease is rubella, otherwise called German measles. Rubella transmits via virus and it has an incubation period of 14 to 21 days. Now, our transmission-based precautions for rubella will include droplet precautions because it's spread via nasopharyngeal secretions and body fluids. So remember that rubella, German measles, can transmit from the pregnant woman to her baby. And so we have to be very careful about children who have rubella coming in contact with pregnant women. Now, with rubella in children, they tend to get this pinkish red rash on the face. It spreads downward to the neck, to the arms, to the trunk, and in some children even to the legs. Many children will have a fever and they'll have um, lymphadenopathy, or you'll notice that the lymph glands are also swollen. So of course, treatment includes antipyretics for the fever, analgesics for the pain, and again, we have to teach parents that the children have to stay away from pregnant women while they have rubella. For the same reason, we do not give pregnant women rubella uh, immunization because the complication of rubella, what we need to remember is that it has teratogenic effects on the fetus. And lastly, our last common pediatric communicable disease is fifth disease or erythema infectiosum. It has an incubation period of one to two weeks and is spread by airborne droplets. Signs and symptoms include a low grade fever and Fifth disease is particular because the child looks like someone slapped them across the face. And so the child's cheek will have that reddish slapped appearance, or they'll also have what we describe as a lacy rash. Fifth disease is another problem where we avoid contact with pregnant women. It can cause miscarriage within the first uh, trimester, first 18 weeks of pregnancy. So, Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the little bell for the notifications for when we put new videos. And check out our website, rnpntutor.com. Thanks again.